Part 1 The Merrimack O child of that white-crested mountain, whose springs gush forth in the shade of the cliff eagle's wings, down whose slopes to the lowlands thy wild waters shine, leaping gray walls of rock flashing through the dwarf pine, from that cloud curtain cradle so cold and so lone, from the arms of that wintry locked mother of stone, by hills hung with forest through vales wide and free, thy mountain-born brightness glanced down to the sea. No bridge arched thy waters save that where the trees stretched their long arms above thee and kissed in the breeze. No sound save the laps of the waters on thy shores, the plunging of otters, the light dip of oars, green tufted oak shaded by Amoskeeg's fall, Thy twin Uncanunuks rose stately and tall. Thy Nashua meadows lay green and unshorn, and the hills of Pentucket were tasseled with corn. But thy Penacook Valley was fairer than these, and greener its grasses, and taller its trees. Ere the sound of an axe in the forest had rung, or the mower his scythe in the meadows had swung. In their sheltered repose, looking out from the wood, the bark-builded wigwams of Pennacook stood. There glided the corn dance, the council fire shone, and against the red war post the hatchet was thrown. There the old smoked in silence their pipes, and the young to the pike, and the white perch their baited lines flung. There the boy shaped his arrows, and there the, ma the shy maid wove her many-hued baskets and bright wampum braid. O stream of the mountains, if answer of thine could rise from thy waters to question of mine, methinks through the din of thy thronged banks a moan of sorrow would swell for the days which have gone. Not for thee the dull jar of the loom and the wheel, the gliding of shuttles, the ringing of steel, but that old voice of waters, of bird, and of breeze, the dip of the wild fowl, the rustling of trees. Part 2. The Bashaba Lift we the twilight curtains of the past, and turning from familiar sight and sound, sadly and full of reverence, let us cast a glance upon tradition's shadowy ground, led by the few pale lights which, glimmering round that dim strange land of eld, seem dying fast. And that which history gives not to the eye, the faded coloring of time's tapestry, let fancy with her dream-dripped dream brush supply. Roof of bark and walls of pine, through whose chinks the sunbeams shine, tracing many a golden line on the ample floor within, where upon that earth for stark lay the gaudy mats of bark, with the bear's hide rough and dark and the red deer's skin, Window tracery small and slight, woven of the willow white, lent a dimly checkered light, and the night stars glimmered down. Where the large fire's heavy smoke slowly through an opening broke, in the low roof ribbed with oak and sheathed with hemlock brown. Gloomed behind the changeless shade by the solemn pine wood made through the rugged palisade in the open foreground planted, Glimpses came of rowers rowing, stir of leaves and wildflowers blowing, steel like gleams of waters flowing in the sunlight slanted. Here the mighty Bashaba held his long unquestioned sway, from the white hills far away to the great seas sounding, sounding shore. Chief of chiefs, his regal word, all the river sachems heard. At his call the war dance stirred, or was still once more. There his spoils of chase and war, jaw of wolf and black bear's paw, panther's skin and eagle's claw, lay beside his axe and bow. And down the pole, roof pole hung, loosely on a snakeskin strung, in the smoke his scalp lock swung grimly to and fro. Nightly down the river going, swifter was the hunter's rowing when he saw that lodge fire glowing, or the water still and red. And the squaw's dark eye burned brighter, and she drew her blanket tighter, 
as with quicker step and lighter from that door she fled. For that chief had magic skill, and a panacea's dark will over powers of good and ill, powers which bless and powers which ban. Wizard lord of Pentecook, chiefs upon their warpath shook when they met the steady look of that wise dark man. Tales of him the gray squaw told, when the winter night wind cold pierced her blankets thick as fold, and her fire burned low and small, till the very child abed drew its bare skin overhead, shrinking from the pale light shed on the trembling wall. All the subtle spirits hiding under earth or wave, abiding in the cavern rock or riding misty clouds or morning breeze. Every dark intelligence, secret soul and influence of all things which outward sense feels or bears or sees. These the wizard's skill confessed and at his bidding banned or blessed, stormful woke or lulled to rest wind and cloud and fire and flood. Burn for him the drifted snow bade through ice fresh lilies blow and the leaves of summer grow over winter's wood not untrue that tale of old now as then the wise and bold all the powers of nature hold subject to their kingly will from the wandering clouds ashore treading life's wild waters o'er as upon a marble floor moves the strong man still Still, to such life's elements, with their sterner laws dispense, and the chain of consequence broken in their pathway lies. Time and change, their vassals making, flowers from icy pillows waking, tresses of the sunrise shaking over midnight skies. Still, to the earnest soul, the sun rests on towards Gibeon, and the moon of Agilon lights the battlegrounds of life. To his aid the strong reverses, hidden powers and giant forces, and the high stars in their courses mingle in his strife.